Welcome to the 90 hour build, The Complication. This is an insane custom guitar built from scratch with, I'm trying to prove just how much is achievable with your bare hands and tools and machines and factory and stuff. Anyway, enjoy. All right, so this is the plan. We have flame maple in the middle as a centerpiece and it's going to be wedged probably about 10 millimeters wide there to a particularly fine at the headstock. Um, this here is rosewood and as is this and this is more flamed maple. Or do I potentially maybe do it the other way around? and have the bulk, of course I do. Of course I do. <sighs> okay, other way around. Rosewood, rosewood, rosewood. Flame maple. And all I need to do is make one very wide piece, so eight centimeters tall, like so. And this piece will be wedged like that with the curve in here. And then I will cut that in half and book match it. That's not too complicated, is it? It is all well and good drawing these things on, on a piece of paper. A full scale plan is really to be preferred. Now, well, we are talking about rosewood in the middle. I like it when the laminates in a multi-laminate neck follow the same geometry as the neck. So it's 10 mil wider here than it is here, or 15 mil. So what I'm gonna do is have a piece in the center that stops my, that joins my two book matched sections, basically. Or do I? No, I do, I do. It's just difficult, so. So this is the problem. I've got this lovely curve, but from here, and this is where drawing these things out in, in reality actually causes the issue. From here, you've got something that looks fairly traditional, actually, because that is glued in and hidden. Um, so really, I want, I want this to be flame maple and I want my, my rosewood to start just inside where the body joint is, I think, um, because that then shows off what we've actually gone and done here. <laughs> Okay, okay, that's much better. So this is rosewood on the outside. This is flame maple on the inside. And then on the headstock, what we're gonna end up doing is uh, follow the line of the, of the neck. So that just carries on through. And then this here will be That'll be flame maple, probably, or maybe, maybe just some some more of the uh, black, white, black veneer there, with more rosewood on the outside. I think that would actually look better, and that will happen here as well. Now, the reason for that decision, the reason for that decision is here, we will have rosewood coming through to there, and then half of the headstock would be flame maple. It's less so here because the, the rosewood or flame maple would be solid up to, and it should be solid unless we've got much. <sighs> anyway, um, but that halfway look, it just doesn't look right. So I will have black, white, black veneers here and then more rosewood uh, creating the wings on the headstock and that will look good. And all we've got, it looks like, um, the neck will look like 
It's got flame maple, uh, a curved flame maple accent in essentially solid rosewood. And that is why you draw things out as many times as possible, preferably in full size. Uh, we found that the feature of that joint was gonna be hidden in the neck pocket, and I didn't want that. Well, guess what? I've slightly changed my mind just a little bit because that's kind of what I do. This huge chunk of rosewood is actually overkill. I'm, I'm very lucky we have a large supply of um, rosewood uh, bought at auction and uh, we have to use it up. And uh, this neck blank will actually do the job perfectly. I also found a, a neck blank that uh, the production team have made that's nice and flamey. For now, I need to take what I've just drawn on my template and uh, transfer that across to the maple and uh, at least get started. And uh, I, I often find once you get started, the, the juices start flowing and you figure out that you should have done it a completely different way from the beginning. <laughs> I'm not going to start with the rosewood because the rosewood is a little bit harder to come by. The, I'm going to put the curve into the flame maple first and I'm, I'm going to do it pretty much by hand. Um, I know that we've kind of gone slightly off piste with this build. I'm, I've been trying to do hand tools predominantly, but at this stage really um, me planing this down to perfect flatness with hand planes versus just going downstairs and using the planar thicknesser. I also need to use a big hefty bandsaw in order to cut the curve uh, relatively straight. Frankly, it might actually be easier to use hand planes to get the original curve right. After that point, I'm still not sure whether I want to use a router and a template or just put the internal curve uh, or the other side of the curve, the spoon, uh, as it were, um, by hand or with machine. I'm, I'm not sure yet. Uh, I had a nice blank. It was flat. It had been pre-prepared at some point in the last few months and was good, but never ever trust that a piece of wood is perfectly flat, especially when you're making a multi-laminate neck or, well, anything. Uh, I took the camera downstairs, realized my mistake, ran back upstairs and uh, just spent a couple of minutes with a hand plane, making sure that the gluing face was nice and, and flat and straight and ready to joint. Uh, I then went back downstairs and you've seen the result. Now, I have an internal curve that goes too straight at some point. I need to, I'm gonna use a spindle sander probably in here and I'll see how even I can get the curve. I could use the end, the curved end of the, uh, here, nice big belt sander. This edge would do rather well. But first of all, I am gonna try the oscillating spindle sander awesomeness. So that's not really working as planned. The tool is the right tool. Spindle sanders are excellent, but this is too narrow. The base on which I'm resting is too narrow and I'm really struggling to keep this uh, square. So I'm getting a wave as I go around and it's just not working. Uh, now, for the first time ever in my life, I find myself needing a compass plane. Um, and, uh, well, we're going on a road trip. I own a tool shop. We have a compass plane in stock. And you're going to see my shop for the first time on Crimson Guitars YouTube ever. So let's go. Oh, that's perfect.
Okay, we have a record 0, 020C. And the beautiful thing is you can adjust the sole. It's got a curved sole. I'm not sure if you can see that, like so. And uh, I can now use that. I can make, make the curve match what I'm trying to get here. And this should work so much better. And uh, get this into, into progress because quite frankly, Uh, well, <laughs> I want to get this thing together. Okay. I find it really hard to believe that I actually have a use for a compass plate. Yeah, so that locks it off. This changes the, the curve in the sole. And uh, this is a Cooper's tool, really, um, for working with barrels or potentially uh, wheel rights. So that's locked off now. And uh, you've got the adjustment that you would normally have in the back there. It's going well. Now, I still have rather a lot of fairly rough surface, but some smooth. So that's really attractive. And uh, the rest of it's looking flamed, but uh, straight off the bandsaw. This is a pretty awesome plane when all is said and done. It's, it's, a typical, it's a typical thing. This is the sort of tool that you just don't need in everyday life. In fact, I had one for years that I never used. And when you need it, by gum do you need it. Isn't that awesome? So uh, I'm going to accentuate that a little bit more. It's going to make this piece even thinner than I originally thought. But if I'm going to go to the trouble of making this uh, massively curved piece, well, it needs to be obvious. <laughs> perfectly, perfectly square. I'm even tempted to keep this. Mm. Anyway, so uh, now we've got a curve in this half and it goes to flat here, seeing as I'm already using this plane. I kind of love it. I kind of, I kind of really like this. It's, it feels weird, but, it, but it's working. Oof. Okay. Mm, yeah. Trying to, trying to plane flat, that is not the plane for the job, I'm afraid. Let's see who else we've got. So. Yeah, that feels better. In all seriousness, this task has been worrying me since I decided to do it. And uh, having the right tool for the job makes it basically, basically easy. Look at that. Just. I couldn't be happier.
Ow, my knuckles hurt. All right, um, okay, so next up, next up, um, I'm gonna run this through the plane of thickness, so you don't know what, you don't need to watch that. And then I need to, uh, I need to cut the reverse shape in. My God, that looks cool. I need to cut the reverse shape in, take the compass plane, reverse <laughs> the sole, and uh, plane the matching curve in. Simple. So there we go. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. All right then. So, uh, did a little bit more than uh, plane it down. I, uh, I planed, it, uh, planed down the rosewood and cut away the excess. And uh, you've already seen the bandsaw in motion. You don't need more footage of that. And uh, I'm too excited to uh, stop, come up and get the camera and uh, vice versa. So uh, we've got, vice versa, we've got a flat section from about here onwards and then a curved section on the rosewood. And essentially I need to uh, put this over the edge of a bench, which means I need to move that. And I'm gonna set the radius on the compass plane to the opposite of uh, what we have on the maple. And then it's actually simple. We basically put the, uh, put the neck together. Well, this part of it, at least. You know what? <laughs> My grain's going the wrong way, which I should have thought about. This isn't going to be as easy as I'd hoped. Not at all. So, all right. What I'm going to have to do is go in from here with the grain. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> this isn't going to work at this point. Uh, I'm going over to a traditional plane for a minute. I don't have the support over here. And uh, this, the compass plane has a very wide mouth because it needs to uh, adjust and needs to have room to adjust. But uh, with the modern plane, I've got a nice closed mouth and I've also got a, uh, I can, because it's flat, put it, at, put it at an angle, essentially, which helps me with my cut. At the moment, that is flat. I need to get rid of all the saw marks. All right, let's have a look. Not far off. Do you want to see it? because I want this curve to be visible, or as much of the curve as possible to be visible on the neck. Uh, most of the wood inside the neck pocket is gonna be maple. Yeah, we'll have a thin line of rosewood. It's done. 
one there. And here you go. I've got the grain going like that into the curve. Maybe if I hadn't done that, the curve would look more curvy. Prior to gluing these two pieces together with veneer, I need to clean up. This plane doesn't have a home. I'm, I'm not gonna keep it, I'm not gonna keep it. If I ever need another one, I can always borrow it from my shop. Then again, if I need it twice within a, say a year, then I'll probably just keep the next one I take. Veneer. What I need is a uh, black, white, black, because uh, the maple is white and you wouldn't, you'd lose the, uh, the other one. Okay, at this point I could put, I would normally uh, pre-drill a couple of holes at either end in waste material and those would, I'd have dowel of some sort and have locating pins and be absolutely <laughs> assured that my glue up is not going to slip up. Bad joke. Uh, in this case though, there is no unused material unfortunately. Uh, so I'm just gonna have to be very, very, very sure when I've been, when I've clamped up that it's all sorted and all right. Glue, glue spreader. Clamps, I'm gonna use these uh, Triton quick release clamps uh, to start with, and then I'm gonna go in between them probably, possibly, maybe with G-clamps. And then on either side, I do need some clamping balls. Well, let's get going. Okay, uh, triple check, double check, we're good. This is probably gonna, probably gonna end up being glued uh, and becoming integral to the whole thing. Okay, now, as you can see, it moves. It slips and slides a little bit. And I'm trying to show you it's slipping and sliding and it's just not slipping or sliding. What the hell? If you are ever tempted to do uh, a multi-laminate neck with veneers and you've got uh, black, white, so maple, black, white, black, maple, black, white, black, maple, or even, you know, go all out and have some purple art in there at some point and decide, ah, I can glue all of that in one shot. That's not a, just, 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 just don't. It is a problem. It will not work. It will slip and slide. Um, your glue will start curing. And, and you will cry, but uh, yeah. This, however, does appear to have worked um, without a hitch, really. I'm going to put in some G-clamps. They are, they are stronger than, uh, than these, that's for sure. We've got veneer poking out where we need it, and uh, on, on either ridge, and it works, it's, yeah, it's all working. And working well. I'm gonna put G-clamps over, around the whole thing. You can never have enough clamps.
Uh, just for fun. Just for fun. One more. I managed to get exactly where I wanted to get in the day, at the, at the right time of day, oh no, i.e. it's five minutes past home time. And I even got to do a little road trip to my favorite fish and chip shop. Anyway, while I'm putting these clamps on, I'm just gonna say thank you very much for uh, your support. Thanks for following and being amazing and all that jazz. Uh, well, in the next episode, in the next episode, I'm going to have to make a, a central section of rosewood, book match this, and we're gonna use these same clamping calls to do the exact same thing again. But uh, after having book matched this piece, it's gonna be amazing. Thanks for watching. Click like and subscribe and all that goodness, and uh, I'll see you soon. Goodbye. Panic, I need more clamps. I've realized something very integral to who I am. If the camera is still going, then we'll talk to it. Non-stop, it just, it just, it just happens. And stuff, and things, planes. What did you think of my shop? Check out vintagetoolshop.com.